Oh, the white place over there. Doing it now. Now. Yeah. Evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the live Q and A, where I help you with your carp fishing questions and queries, and the whole community answers any questions and queries between the lot of us when we just have a load of great fun. So, guys, welcome. Good to see you all in here. Good to see you, Brian Mills. How are you? Will Carp Fishing. How are you, mate? Sean Mulqueen. Good to see you. Evening, Shane. Evening, Adrian. Dan Williams. Alfie Archer. Daniel O'Brien. Evening. The Wealth Carp, carp Catchers as well. Evening to you all. Glad you could all be here. Is the audio coming across okay, guys? Can you hear me okay and see me okay? Oh, am I a bit loud then? Sorry. <laughs> evening, John Starkey, Lewis McGuire, Morgan Evans, evening. Ray Sherry, evening to you. Evening, Scott. Good to see you all in here as usual. How's everyone's weekend going? Who's actually out on the bank fishing, watching this live feed as you're fishing this evening? Jake Douglas, good to see you, mate. He's on the bank. It's got to be Carpy. He's had a day with the London Ambulance Service. Big up the black chickens, Graham. Good to see you as well. Steve Wilson is saying, Hi, Leon. He's, I, he's just started using zigs and he's struggling to get good indication on his bite alarms. What bite alarms are you using, Steve? And are you fishing tight lines? Heavy bobbins as well. Evening, Carl G. How are you? Derek Smith, good to see you. Phil Humphreys. Good to see you. Troy Mutton, good to see you as well. Troy Mutton asks, do you ever use pellets or boilies more? I use boilies more, really. Pellets sometimes. There's no silver fish about. And use pellets more in the winter as well. Sean Mulqueen has been laying blocks for his new man cave. Good on you, Sean. Nathan Leake had two nice commons yesterday. Nice to see you, Keith. Look, here's the little apprentice. There's the apprentice with us. Ryan Coatsy, good to see you as well, mate, in here. Good to see you, Peter Tool, as well. Andy Greening, good to see you. 29 of you in here on a Saturday night, which is pretty good, isn't it? Sleeping bag of choice for winter fishing. Well, Ross, in the spring, summer and autumn, I tend to use a light three sort of seasons. So I can move about a lot quicker. In the winter, I get a bit of luxury. Uh, I, my current bag is the is the Fox, the one with the flat with the flat lighter, which comes attached to it. With the two, um, with the five season one. That's the one I use for my winter fishing. But I'm trying to find one, a real warm one, which is not furry, which is a nice, um, slick, slick material inside. So I'll be looking for an, a different one this winter. Oh, Joanne Coates is out fishing a 70 acre pit. Good for you, mate. Wish I was. France Rizzo says, is the other half allowed in the man cave? She won't come in here. There's all the fishing bits and pieces and everything. <laughs> Ross McDaniel just ordered the faultless one. I've got the faultless one, and I use that till it gets really cold with a cover as well, and that seems to be all right. Yep, I've got a faultless snug pack one, but I find when it gets freezing, it's not... I mean, when it gets like minus temperatures... It, it can not be as warm as what it should be. Rick Bailey is in a Papos. 
in Greece, I believe that is, isn't it, Rick? Good for you. Wish I was there sunning it up. Paul Theorone, the one. I'm good, Gareth Price. Barney's downstairs with her that must be obeyed. Cheers, Darren Lindsay. Appreciate, well, appreciate all you guys, all the, con all the comments, all your feedback, you watching the videos. It's brilliant, isn't it? Plus our closed Facebook group. If you haven't seen that, get yourself over there. It only takes one bite. Facebook group where we all help each other with any of our questions or queries or, you know, anything to do with carp fishing. Post our videos up there as well. Alfie Archer asks, what should he do if his bobbin pulls up and doesn't return to its original position? Does it mean you've been done? It could well do. Normally, if a bob... Look, there's a carp dog. There he is, look. He's just turned up in the corner. It normally means if the bobbin goes up and doesn't come down, that to me isn't a liner. That means you've either been done or you've got one on. Sean Castle asks, how's my week been? Busy, as usual, with work. But it's great to take five minutes off and see all you guys and have a good chat. Peter All Tools, loving the videos and the Facebook page. Thank you very much, Peter. David Dawkins asks, he says, I'm not out this weekend. No, I'm indoors fighting the good calls. The missus, Mrs. B has just had an operation. So I've been helping her and the apprentice, he's here as well, and a carp dog. Phil Humphreys, thank you very much. Says it's a brilliant group. The only takes one bike group. Andrew Murphy on sleeping bags. He's got the Sub-Zero, the Nash Sub-Zero 20 Indulgence. That's mega warm and I believe that's mega comfy as well, isn't it? Hi, Dingle. Hope you're well. 55 of us in here. Give us a thumbs up, guys. Hit that like button. Or even share it. Share it on your social media. Get as many people in here as possible. Troy Mutton asks, what do you use for winter carp fishing? Well, there's lots of things. I like high attract singles, things like Pepper Army, Maze is good, um, Maggots are also good. Lots of different options. It's got to be digestible. It's got to be a digestible bait. I tend to steer away from fish mill baits in the winter. Dave Fisher says he's just got back and he's from fishing and he's blanked. We all blank. I blank more than I catch and so does most people. I will do, Dave. David, thank you very much. If I'm fishing zigs at Clark, I always fish a tight line with my zigs. Always. No matter if I'm fishing just in a corner or I'm fishing 100 yards out, always a tight line. Because then you can tell what's going on. Mark Beavers asks, Leon, do I ever use flying back leads? Uh, I don't. I've had some bad instances with them over the years. I haven't used them for many years. The only time I'd use a back lead would be if there's a lot of weed floating around and I want to back lead my lines at the tip, put them right down. But that's an exception because I don't really like back leads. Rick Bailey says he loves the videos. Thank you, Rick. Love, love you guys watching them. Brian Mills hasn't had a fish since the beginning of May, but then again, he hasn't been out. <laughs> I remember once I did 50 nights for not one bite in the winter once. It's just the way it is. You just got to keep on keeping on. I was camping and not carping. <laughs> Ross McDaniel asks, have I tried the new Gemini lead yet? No, I haven't. I haven't, um, I haven't come across it. I've seen the video about it, and it looks interesting. Uh, just need to have a, have a proper close look at it, really. I think if you want to cast mega distances, over 120, 130 yards, then this could be an added advantage because it's more streamlined. But fishing 40, 50 yards out, I can't really see the point of it myself, personally. 77 of us in a game. Oh, 
Oh, just add a little tug. Ken Singley says, do I fish much in Kent? Uh, I used to fish a lot in Kent, and I have got a syndicate lake in Kent that I fish just in the spring, but mainly I like to travel around quite a bit. Brian Mill says, after 43 years of carp fishing, he's lost the drive to go this year. It happens to us all. I've been there myself where I haven't been for six months, where I just can't be bothered getting all the gear ready, and sometimes you get down to the lake, and you just get there, set up, and you go, why am I bothering? What am I doing here? You just have to give it a rest for a while, and hopefully it'll come back. That buzz will come back. Mark Beavers asks, if fishing slack lines, what line do I use? If I'm fishing slack lines, and I'm fishing up to about 40, 50 yards max, then I would use a fluorocarbon, so it slackens right off. Don't you texting me? <laughs> The Apprentice is even commenting on there. ISB, how are you? I have a Paul Lacritz. Hope you're well. Andy Hayward asks, Hi, Hi Leon, do I ever use sticky baits? I used to work for sticky baits, helping them with their media and photography work many years ago when they first started up. And I was the guy who invented the Bookerberry pop-ups. That was my sort of little invention. So, yeah, I mean, good bait. Most baits are good baits. Deldy Angler, good to see you in as well, mate. Thanks for the kind comments. Andy Greening says, do you ever go to the big one at Farnborough? Yes, I will be working there at the big one at Farnborough on the Summit Tackle Stand this year. Steve Wilson says, would you ever use a Deeper Pro? I do use one very occasionally uh, for just mapping out areas if it's very weedy or something just to find them extra spots but i don't use one that often wayne pettigrew says i matey it's mad dog wayne just got back from fishing had a nightmare a lot of liners it was very tight up help um just got to keep on keeping on wayne it's got to keep on keeping on and it will come good. You've got to be confident in what you're doing. We all blank. We all have hard times. Perversity asks, I'm looking for new reels. What do I recommend? Well, I haven't bought a new reel for many, many years. I still use the SS3000s or now I still do the T500 or 5,000 T's as well, which I've got set off. So I tend to be a bit old school like that and use the older older reels. Relixia has, have I ever tried hydro weak liquid? If so, what did you think and how to use it? I haven't used it as yet. Uh, I've got some. Um, but I tend to use things more like hydrodized liver. If you look at my latest video about pimping up your hook baits and boilies, then the liquid liver with liver powder, green lip muscle, uh, a nice stick mix liquid coming out from SSP, which I helped develop, which has got um, which, which got lots of goodies in there, like hemp oil and, you know, real tiger nut extract in there. Just all nice things that you want. That's what I used to pimp up milk, milk baits and my stick mix and my ground bait or pellets or whatever. Spob mix even as well. Dave Fisher asks, will I be doing a vlog on different rigs and knots? Uh, I will do eventually. I've done a couple on how to tie certain rigs and bits and pieces, and I always try to include them in my vlogs on a Monday, different bits and things I'm doing within there. Danny Sliver asks, have I used the ESP hooks? Yes, they're chud. Type hook, the stiff rigger is a very good hook, very sharp. The Mark II is nice. I've used those before. I like them. Uh, I haven't seen the, or I haven't used the Dow MCAS 5000 reels, but I've heard good things about them. Dwayne asks, hello, every time you go carp fishing, do you a spod or do you just use boilies more often? 
A lot of the time when I get to a lake, it's quite late in the evening and I use singles. I try and find the fish. If I fish something like Sandhurst or Linear, then I'll probably spot a bit of kit out depending on how, the, how it's feeding and what time of year it is. So most of the time I don't spot. Most of the time I use singles or scattering of baits. I want to catch them, not feed them. Wayne Pettigrew says, what's a good winter bait? Anyone, any, a winter bait to me is one that's very highly digestible. So it's got minimum amount of fish meal in it. It's got loads of good digestible ingredients. I mean, you just got to look at how popular Richworth Tooty Fruity was and how many fish that caught. And there was nothing in that. It's just really digestible. Look at maize. Um, you know, lots of different lots of different baits out there which you can use. Check out the System X from SSP Baits. That's the new version that's coming out. That's an all season. You can use that through the winter as well. And I'm going to be giving that a good go this winter. Mixing that in with me particles and bits and pieces. Graham Green says, "Do he does he need to approach a res res water differently to stand a lake? Just take what you know and what works, what you have confidence in. Take that to your new lake and then adapt after you see what's happening at the lake and your catch rates and you know the bottom you're fishing over and things like that. But always always take something that works for me already." onto a new venue and then I adapt it to how the fish are showing me what they do. Don't forget guys, if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, there's loads of really good videos on there. Hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell notification and then you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. I think most of you guys are already subscribed. Evening Ben Faulkner, hope you're well. Rob Prout says, Hi Leon, would I use particles in the winter? I use a lot of particles in the winter because they're very digestible. I use those with boily crumb, chopped boilies, liquids, hemp, all those maize. Put that all in, mix it all up with a few maggots as well and I don't think you can beat that with the boilie that you're using, dedicated winter boilie. You can't beat that. Two or three spots over. It depends on what type of water you're on. Brett Dunmo fished the lake last week full of black chickens. Look. The old black chickens. If you haven't, if you haven't seen my black chicken t-shirts in all different colours and sizes, get yourself over to www.leoncarper.com. Have a look at the black chicken t-shirts. Get yourself one of them. And they, I guarantee they scare the black chickens away. <laughs> Can... Uh, Perversi says, can anyone recommend a bed chair that's comfortable, light, and won't break the bank? I'll tell you what I use for three quarters of the year. I use one of the Witchwood Compact. They're about 100 quid or less. Nice and comfortable, really light. Check out those. Win Witchwood Compact bed chairs. There's about three or four different sizes as well. Kids ask, is the new System X coming out to be tested for us all to buy a little? Yes, you should be able to get it soon. The new, updated, got loads more lovely new bits and pieces in there. That'd be very soon. Best thing to do is to email Kev or Margaret at SSP Bates. Keep looking at the Facebook page as well because they will be releasing it as soon as possible. Wayne Pettigrew asks, a really good question here. Do you like bait boats or do you think it's cheating? Anything you can use as a tool in your fishing, I don't think it's cheating. If you just use a bait boat for everything, every little cast, everything like that, then it's not cheating, it's just laziness. I've used a bait boat over the years when I got France, obviously, but in England as well, for baiting up before I went to work. So it just saves time, all that spotting. Just get a bait boat out, chuck it out there, Dump all your bait you want to do in a swim, ready for coming back in two or three days' time. It's just a lot quicker. It gives you a lot more lot more fishing time when you're actually there before you have to go to work or go home and see her indoors. Steve Fox says he loves the videos and help. Looking forward to the self-take photography advice. I'm hoping to do those this week, or at least one of them this week. So watch out for those in the next couple of weeks, guys. I'll be doing one on just generally how to set up 
position yourself with to do with light and things like that. I'll be doing some top tips on photography. I'll also be doing how to take self takes with your smartphone, like your iPhone, and also the self take setup, what you need, and how to take them with a DSLR. So watch out for those videos. There's a new sort of series of videos I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. I know I've been keeping on promising them, but I'm actually going to do them these next couple of weeks. Andy Haber says, do I use zigs all year round? It depends on the water I'm at, but if they're, if they're getting caught on zigs, I'm catching them, I will use them all, all year round. Particularly in the winter, they're very good. Evening, Matthew Randall. Hope you're well. Ian R asks, have I used a fish spine? No, I haven't, but I wouldn't mind having a little look at it. Giving it a go, you know, just for novelty factor, seeing what's on the bottom on your on your spot. No problem, Steve Fox. Always a pleasure. Eighty-two of you in here. Twenty-one minutes gone. We've been on. When is everybody next out fishing? Then are you out during the week? Are you a midweek type of guy, or are you a weekend when you can get time away from work and the misses and family commitments? Let me know in the comments. Are you midweek, or are you a weekend type of angler? Keith Oakley asks, Leon, do I ever use match the hatch pop-ups? When you say match the hatch pop-ups, is that where I sort of try and match the colours and what I'm using with my bottom baits? Uh, yes, or but a lot of the time I use something which is alternative to that, like a fluoro or white. If I'm using a fish meal, I use something alternative, so it shows up over the baiting area. Bentley Fisheries, Brett Dunmo's going Friday and Saturday night. Good luck, Ben. Let's all know how you get on. Tony Davis is out in the morning. The Welsh Carp catch is going on Monday at 48 hours. Good for you. Paul Lacritz, his rods are hung up, are hung up for the next four weeks, and he's feeling painful. I feel your pain. I feel your pain, Paul. Michael Carroll's got a weekend match next weekend. Good luck. Let us know how you get on. Oh, look at that. Mark Beavers is going to Bluebell Lakes for eight days on Wednesday. You lucky sod. Nuvnos says, what shock leader material do I use? It depends. I use sort of a tapered leaders or I use uh, like 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon, 18 to 20 pound fluorocarbon as my leader. Even if I'm using normal nylon, I try and use a fluorocarbon leader. Even if I'm using fluorocarbon all the way through, I still use a fluorocarbon leader as well. John Life. John Lift's going to Bluebell Lakes tomorrow. Good for you. Multi-rig helicopter or lid clip. I use both, Joel, depending on what the rules are for the lake. I use I like to use a clip though for the multi-rig. SB is going out next week for his birthday. Happy birthday, SB, for next week. If I don't see you or speak to you. Leighton Gibson says, hello, mate. Brilliant vlogs. Keep them coming. Thanks for the show of support from all you guys. Sean Mulqueen says at the moment it's what month he's going to get out, not what week or what days he's going to get out, it's what month. I feel your pain, Sean. I feel your pain. Keith Oakley says he's called a sublime leaders, can't fault it. Good for you. Whatever you're confident in, whatever works for you, use it. Mike Perks, tomorrow, five days of Bradley's. Good for you, Mark. Let us know how you get on. No problem, Joel. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to speak to all you guys on here. I have you all on the channel watching and looking and commenting. And, you know, that's what it's all about, this community. If you haven't been over to our closed Facebook group, it only takes one bite. It's called Get Yourself Over There. If you're watching this on playback, get yourself over there. Ask to be invited in. Get in and then ask as many questions as you like. If you've got videos, post up your videos, post up your questions. Just Join the community, embrace all the other guys that are in there, and we'll all help you out. Rob Prout asks, what's my opinion on solid bags, a big fish tactic or not? It all depends on the specific lake. You can catch any fish in the country on any rig, on any bait, in any situation. You know, I wouldn't say one thing's better than another for catching big fish. Boilies, maybe, but then there's been loads of... Big fish caught on maize or whatever.
Dwayne Polies, he said he's still learning carp fishing. We're all still learning carp fishing. Any small learning tips will help. Get yourself over to the YouTube channel and have a look at the videos and get yourself to other people's YouTube channels and you'll get loads of little tips and tricks and advice there. Try and stay away from the product placement channels. Uh, there's some good there's some good videos and good channels run by companies, but they're mainly advertising to use this hook or that you know, whatever. So try and take that on board, but make up your own mind or ask other people what works for them. Get recommendations. That's always the best way I look at anything. Always look for recommendations. I actually just get it and use it and see how good it is myself. <sighs> Betty Babe's going Sunday afternoon, 40 hours. He's fishing over everyone else's bait from the weekend. Wayne Pettigrew said it's about time that I get a black chicken tattoo. I don't think so, Wayne. What, round right about there, I reckon. Don't think so. Brett Dummer says, oh, the T-shirt's selling well. They're doing okay, Brett, for the people who want them, who like them. I only did it sort of like, not earning money out of them, just for people who, who like them, really, to create the community. Got lots of new designs coming out. So... Wait for those to come out. You're, um, hopefully you'll like them. And I'm trying to source some hoodies at the moment for the winter. But winter's coming very soon. Like that. Did you like? Did you like that, Louis? <laughs> Ian R asks, "Do I glug my hook baits?" Yes, I always enhance my hook baits. Even straight out of the bag, I always either air dry them a little bit, put a bit of oil in them, or a bit of hydrized liver, and then I put powders on them, so it sucks it all in, and that's what I use as my hook baits, always. Wayne, Vince Ferguson, good to see you here, mate. He's off tight lines. Enjoy yourself, enjoy your Saturday evening. Good to see you all here. Hi, Keith Paris. Good to see you here as well, mate. Have I thought about doing caps and hats? I'm looking into... I've just tried to get some samples of some sort of beanie hats. Some grey sort of uh, beanie hats for the winter. So I'm looking into those at the moment. So keep an eye on the Facebook and the internal Facebook page and the YouTube channel and... We'll see if they're going to... I like to test everything first to see if it's all right before I start selling things or giving stuff away. Yep, Sean Castle. I love the winter time. It's the best time of year for me also. That carp says tight lines or slap lines. It all depends. The swim I'm fishing, the lake I'm fishing, the situation I'm fishing. I tend to fish up to about 40, 50 yards. I fish slackish lines. In the margins, totally slack. Over about 40, 50 yards. Semi-slack to 78 yards. I'll be fishing a tight line. Also, if you're fishing over bars or weed, always a tight line. Yep, so you can look like black chickens, yeah. Paul Stevenson says, don't forget triple XL hoodies for the larger angler. I won't, Paul. Those smog things keep your neck warm. Yeah, I'll, have, I'll see if I can get some of those. Luke Sargent says, any good French lakes you would recommend, preferably small, three to five angles max. Have a look, Luke, at a place called Itang Monnier. You can get about four to five angles on their max. There's a house on site, loads of 50s in there, 40s, loads of good fish in there. I think you might have even done a 60 at some time. Uh, have a look at that. I'll be doing a video on that next year. Me and the captain will be going for a week there in May. Lewis McGuire asks, have I fished any of the lakes of Godalming? No, Lewis, I haven't. Evening, Andrew Oakley. Good to see you. Black chicken gloves. Oh, I don't know. Whatever turns you on, I suppose. Would that be neoprene? <laughs> Andy Hayward asks, have I used a fish bar? I haven't. 
that co-op says fake baits like pop-up corn. I'm a great believer in the old fake baits as well, like the pop-up maize and pop-up plastic corn. Caught lots of fish over the, on them over the years, even the tiger nuts, even the plastic tigers. Keith Oakley says fishing tight lines at range 8 yards plus and using tubing with the tubing off the bottom. Doesn't really matter if it's off the bottom or on the bottom or whatever. I'm still fishing at 80 yards line. I want instant indication. It's just something I have to put up with, not knowing that me last few metres is not flat on the bottom. It's just one of those things. I want instant indication. If you get a bite, you're fishing a slack line at 8 yards, you're not going to know you've got a fish on. Could cause problems. You know, could go into snag, could get wrapped around an island. I want instant 80 yards on fishing bowstring tight lines. Frank Rizzo says the wife is getting the ump because he's watching me rather than he's watching Strictly. Any advice? I can't help you with that one, Frank Rizzo, I'm afraid. That's one you're going to have to man up and deal with yourself. I know. Strictly come dark. What's all that about? It should be banned. Yeah, good advice from Sean Mulqueen. Go and have a look at Gareth. Check out Gareth Watkins on Facebook. He owns Quiet Blanche Lakes. I've heard good things about that. Lots of big cats in there and big carp. Have a look at that one. Mike Townsend said, what's my thoughts dumping leads on lead core, lead free, heli rig safe or not safe? Um, I believe the quarter heli safe rigs, uh, they work. They, they do what they're meant to do. So in any situation, if you can drop the lead, whatever you're doing, uh, it's always a good thing because you've got more chance of landing that fish. You've got more direct contact. It's less chance for that fish to get wrapped up in weed or a snag or something. David Etox says, Leon, how do I approach autumn with my baiting? I increase my baiting in the autumn because they're having a bit of a feed up after not really doing a lot in the summer, ready for the winter. So it depends. I can increase it if I feel the need to. Roy Close, good to see you in here, Roy. Do I think line colour matters? Um, depends on the clarity of the water, I think. I think what matters more is actually getting your line down as close to the bottom as possible rather than line colour. Darren Lindsay says, if using tigers, how much free offerings do I suggest? A very good question. I would tend to go on the light side. A pouch full at all, a pouch full, one or two pouchfuls of tigers, over your area is more than enough. Put some in your spot mix, crush some up, but don't, I wouldn't heap loads of them in. It just defeats the object of using them. Gaz Jones says, get a TV in the shed for the wife. <laughs> like your style, Gaz. Graham, that's just wrong. He says, bring back Love Island. That's just wrong. Strictly under the thumb. I like your style, though. Your style, Joe. Well, that is a way of looking at it, Paul, isn't it? Strictly come dancing, a great negotiation chip to get on the bank. I didn't think of that. You're ahead of the game there, Paul, weren't you? Keith Oakley says, top marks on the heli safe. There's another thumbs up for you. Mark Beaver says, do I ever fish anywhere else in Europe? Yes, France, uh, Holland as well. I've fished quite a number of times. Belgium a little bit. That carp, why have running legs gone out of fashion? I don't think they've gone out of fashion. There just hasn't been a lot of information about it. I still know guys that use them a catch. So which to me would be, if they've gone out of fashion and not a lot of people using them, now would be the time to get back on them. Carpy Chris says, do you think pop-ups work at night or better in the day and why? I think they can work at any time. I don't think they necessarily work any better any time of the day. It depends on when the feeding times of the fish are on the lake. 
Billy Eden says, at what time of the year would you encourage using paste wrapped around your hook baits? I would use that all time of year, but even more so in the winter as added attraction. Brett Dunmo says, how about a vlog on what you cook on the bank? I've started to, I don't know if you've seen the latest vlogs, but I've started to include a lot of what I'm actually using. I might actually even, I mean, I don't know if you guys would be interested now, I'm cooking it up. I mean, it's just putting the stuff in there and cooking it up, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, it, that could work, couldn't it? Your kids has also got another thumbs up for the heli safe there. See, Brian Mills, he uses 90% running leads. Old school Brian. <sighs> Carl G says, why don't Southern Angus try their skills north of Birmingham? Different types of waters can only improve skills. Exactly. But the problem is, Carl, is that we've got bigger fish down south and we've got lots of smaller fish as well. So I can't see the point why Southern Angler, unless it's a specific area wants, or lake or type of fish he wants to go and fish, why he would go up there when he's got it all, you know, we're blessed down in south with a lot of lakes, a lot of different sized fish. It's very difficult north, north of Birmingham. It's, there's not as many lakes and just as many, if not more, carp anglers. <laughs> Brian Mills old school. Love it. Love it, Brian. Bankside Master Chef. Yeah, that's got that's got that's got legs, hasn't it? Jason Sutiana bang on the chicken wraps. Oh, that's the ones. I mean, I've just my last video is going out Monday. Indian spicy Indian wraps. Oh mate, chicken wraps, they're the ones. Fuel costs as well, Sean Castle says. Yep, exactly. Another thumbs up for the call to heli safe. Can't fault them spot on. There you go. I think that answers who asked that question. So who's looking forward to winter? Winter will be here very soon. Sounds like something out of Game of Thrones, doesn't it? Winter's coming. Black chicken wraps, Brett Dumbo, I like your style. Chicken bacon and stuffing wraps. Oh, that sounds good over Christmas time anyway. What I think of Nash's Trigger Link, Leon. Um, I mean, it's got, I used it many years ago. It, it, you know, it, um, it's just another hook link, isn't it? I mean, no, it acts in a slightly different way, but you just got to have confidence in what you're doing and what you're using. So, if you like it, if you use the trigger link and it works for you, just keep using it. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on keeping on. Can't be Chris. He hates winter. Can't be Chris. I love winter because there's less anglers on the bank. The fish are bigger. And I love the solitude. And there's no strictly come dancing on the telly when I'm out in the winter either. That's proper food, Dwayne. Frank Rizzo, yep. Keep on keeping on t-shirts. They'll be coming soon as well. I-595, evening to you as well, mate. He's on the bank and he's waiting for a bite as well. Good for you. Billy Eden says, can I recommend a good sleeping bag or system for the depths of winter? Nash and Fox do very good system ones. Uh, you've also got the faultless one. The snug pack one, but use a cover with that. Uh, I'm not sure about the others. I think Gardner have got a new one coming out as well, which is about the under 25 quid mark, which I'm going to try and get hold of one or two uh, and do a review for you guys on anyway. Daniel O'Brien asks, what do I prefer, Zig or off a lead clip, inline or all those adjustable ones? 100% adjustable ones. If it's over about seven or eight feet, got to be an adjustable one. Billy, so you can, sorry, not Billy, uh, Daniel or Brian, so you can move it up and down. Fish three rods on the adjustable zigs, move one up, one down, one around, and then whichever one you get a bite on, put them all at that level. Uh, 
Nash Sub-Zero, Brett Dunmo says, how do you locate carp in winter? A very, very good question. I keep my eyes and ears open even more in the winter. I'm always watching. I go on past winters where the fish have been. They're the two main things. And it's got winter form, the water. Tracker Big Snooze is a great bag. I remember using the Tracker 365 bag. That's a really good bag as well. Guess Joe says, when am I out in the bank? I'm hoping to get out this week. Max Stobart, good to see you. Evening too. He's been at work all day. Need to get on the bank for a couple of hours. Try and sneak a chunk, yeah. Got to get out now. Otherwise, all this work is not good. You've got to have a bit of relaxation on your own. Do a bit of fishing. Steve Fox says, what tips to keep you motivated during the winter? What I do, Steve, is I look back at fish I've caught in previous winters, and that just keeps on motivating me to keep on going and keep on keeping on. It's always a chance. It only takes one bite. Always a chance. Joel Duck says, singles for winter or small amount of particles? Depends on the depends on the lake I'm fishing. If it's the park lake, which I'll be doing a lot on this winter, it'll be singles, maybe a scattering of bait. If someone like Sandhurst, I'll be putting, I'll be spawning out good digestible chopped up boilies and particles and emp and maize and groats and all that sort of stuff. Depends on the lake I'm fishing. John, John Cliff says, Urban Bates Nutcracker, especially with Glug and Liver Powder, good for winter. Yes, that's a good way. That Liver Powder is good. SB loves the cold mornings on the bank. I do too. I love them. Nothing better than that freezing cold in the winter and you actually get a bite. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? I tend to, I, what I tend to do in the winter time. I've done, been very successful in lakes that are relatively shallow, shallow, over six, under six to seven feet deep, preferably five foot deep or less. Always respond better to when the temperature gets warmer. If you get a little rise during the day, you'll get you sometimes get a bite at night. Roy Close says, use turmeric in the winter. I use the turmeric all the time on my maggots. It's a really good tip for you guys. If you're using maggots, riddle them off a couple of times a day, put some turmeric powder in there, and it will up your catch rate. Keith Oakley says, hi Leon, his missus just asked me, what's my UK PB? It's 56 pound and nine ounces, common. UK PB days. Andy Hayward says, have I ever used pigeon conditioner? Yes, it's a very good, especially the aniseed one. It's a very good attractor in the winter. Dell says, how do I cope with the long winter nights on the bank? I usually take my little iPad or if I'm not listening where fish are crashing, I usually read or listen to a radio or tie rigs up or, you know, be shooting things like this. In the depths of winter. I'll still be doing these live from the bank broadcasts. When I'm sitting in the freezing cold. 7 o'clock at night on a Saturday or during the week. With the light on my face talking to you guys. Worms are very good as well. Chop them up or even thread a couple of big ones on the hook. Jim Gray says, do I add rock salt to my baits in the winter? As a rule, no. I think... There's different ways of putting salt in your bait. There's some stuff like bellican powder. Uh, sorry, bellican paste and powder. That's very salty. That's a very good addition to wrapping around your boilie or adding into your spod mix. Yeah, Vitalin is a very good ground bait. Dog food Vitalin. Have a look at it, guys, if you haven't already. See, Sean Saunders got his PB last winter, 34 pound, 34 pound mirror in the winter. 
Grenville Lake, Steve Borlas. Um, I did that. I did. I was on the list to get a ticket many years ago, and decided that I didn't want to. It's, a, it's not that it's a massive, big open lake, but a lot of the fish are of the Simo strain, and I didn't want to fish for those big Simos. If that's the Grenville Lake I'm thinking of. Well, guys, I'm going to take a few more questions. A couple more questions, because it's 45 minutes into this. Then I'm going to go enjoy my Saturday night with The Apprentice, The Carp Dog, and Mrs. B. So I'll take a couple more questions, see if I can help you. Andy Hayward asks, what make of GLM do I use? I go onto the sports nutrition websites. It's quite expensive, Greenlit Muscle. If you get like half a kilo, if you use it sparingly, you're gonna it's gonna last you all year round. You only want a spoonful in there. Billy Eden says, in terms of winter spob mix, what ingredients and additives would you go for during the colder months? Right, this would be my spob mix for the winter. All my spob mixes start off with chili hemp. Now, if you haven't seen my chili how to make chili hemp video, go and check that out. I put groats in there because groats suck in all that juice from the hemp and from anything, any liquids I'm putting in there. So I always use groats. They create a nice cloudy cloud, a milky cloud, which attracts the fish. Maize, sweet corn, chop boilers that you're using, like I'm using the System X. I chop those up in a crusher or whatever. Some with bits. I use whole 12 mil boilies, some. 16 15 millers as well. I want lots of different objects in there Maybe a bit of liver powder in there or even liquid liver and I do it I mix all that up the day before I go so it all sucks in all them juices That's my ideal spob mix. Maybe add some maggots in when it gets really cold That would be my ideal winter spob mix There we go, guys. I'm going to call it a night. We've been going for 47 minutes. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight, guys. I really appreciate every single one of you coming on here, commenting, watching my videos on my YouTube channel. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. Get yourself over to our internal Facebook page. It only takes one bite. Get yourself an invite into there. Ask as many questions as you like. Post up as many videos as you want. It's a really great, really great internal Facebook, closed Facebook group. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and I will see you. I may even do one of these lives Tuesday night. Maybe Tuesday night. If not, I'll see you next Saturday. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you soon. Catch some big fish.